We just got back from uh, Columbus, Ohio. We did a Live South show. Uh, we had done Chicago earlier in January, and uh, this is the first time we've been back to Ohio in, in several years. There were 274 leads that were uh, generated from prospects interested in moving to the South. And it's always enlightening to listen to the stories as people come by the booth and they just talk to you about why they're considering leaving. And um, many of them said, gosh, I pay a municipal income tax, plus I pay an employment tax in the city I work in, plus I pay state income tax, federal income tax, and each individual service in many cases has its own taxing authority. So when you add all that up, uh, they just felt like they were being uh, you know, overly taxed and, and they were looking for an alternative. So uh, it, it was just interesting to hear their stories. Um, some of the folks, uh, uh, you know, were, were teachers, and they were talking about what's going on in Ohio and Wisconsin right now, and, uh, and how they're concerned about their future retirement. And it's kind of ironic; they're looking at coming to Tennessee uh, to preserve the retirement they earned in Ohio. So, so uh, you know, of course, we we'll welcome we welcome newcomers and uh, and anxious to to get new folks moving to Kingsport. Along those lines, the uh, 2010 census just came out yesterday. And we were very pleasantly surprised to find that King Sports population was 48,205, which uh, our, our latest high estimate was 47,356. So we, uh, we actually exceeded that number. And uh, when you consider all that's happened in King Sport over the past 10 years with changes in manufacturing employment and other things, uh, it would have been very easy to go the other direction. But uh, instead, we increased about 7.3%. Sullivan County as a whole went up about 2.5%, which again, Sullivan County co closely related to King Sports economic futures. So, uh, you know, if we struggle, they struggle. Um, but we all made it a comeback uh, between 2000 and 2010, which is a great number. When you look at the state-by-state -state census information and you analyze the various counties, the places that we've been recruiting people to relocate from the Northeast and the Midwest, many of those states are colored tan, which means declining population. And when you pull up Tennessee's, uh, there's only a handful of counties that decline in population statewide. So Tennessee continues to see uh, healthy growth. Uh, some places in the uh, you know, metro Nashville area and, and uh, metro Knoxville area are seeing 25% uh, growth, which is probably you know a, a growth rate that's pretty risky when it comes to compromising traffic and strain on infrastructure and those kinds of things. Um, uh, Two point five percent is a very healthy, manageable growth rate. Uh, what I like to say is it's the Goldilocks theory: not too hot, not too cold, just right. So if you choose to move to Kingsport, uh, the assumptions that you put into your decision making, uh, you're not going to outgrow those in just about five years when you know you're inundated with more people than we can handle in our infrastructure. Uh, I know that Mr. Campbell, our city manager, always points out that you know many cities across the state and across the nation, for that matter, are struggling to meet demand for water supply. Um, we are at 50% capacity, so we have plenty of capacity to support future growth. Um, also, in sewer treatment, uh, we have plenty of capacity to handle whatever may be coming down the line uh, there too. So, again, it's it's uh, we're trying to be cognizant of what is a reasonable growth and what we should be uh, focusing on our efforts on in the future. Um, I also had the opportunity this week to go to um, Bluefield, West Virginia. Uh, they are in a, a coal and railroad area that has uh, declined over the years with the changes in the economy as well. And uh, they had heard the Kingsport story and asked us to come share it with uh, their city city officials. And uh, it, was, it was very interesting to be up there and, and do that. Uh, because they have a couple of developments that are just across the border in Virginia that have the potential to do as Cumberland County, Crossville, Tennessee, or Loudoun County near Knoxville, where the developer came from Charlotte and uh, can make a big impact on their future. So uh, they're kind, they're trying to poise themselves for future growth, and it's just anxious. It's always it's always interesting, and and I enjoy sharing the Kingsport story, particularly with those that invite me to come and and meet with them. Uh, I'll throw in there that we, on the way back from Ohio, I, I drove because I wanted to go up US 23 the entire way. And uh, I'd heard a lot of things about Pikeville, Kentucky, about being one of the best small towns in America. And so I pulled off the highway and drove through. I'm, I'm just going to say, if you haven't been to Pikeville, Kentucky lately, you ought to go because they have really done a great job. Uh, it's like they've just polished every street sign and 
they, they have hanging baskets out in the summer. Uh, they're the Eastern Kentucky Expo Center, Pikeville College, uh, a brand new downtown multi-story Hampton Inn adjacent to a parking structure. They're really doing the things that are going to position themselves for the future. And so I, I like to see places that pull themselves up by the bootstraps and reinvent themselves. And I think that's what Kingsport's done, and I certainly think that's what Pikeville's doing as well. So that's the weekly update, and I'll check in with you next week.